this video I'd like to share with you some ideas on how you can teach aspects of place value. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to engage students. I love using clips from YouTube, of course you view them first. Here I have got one which I have downloaded and inserted within notebook software. Um, you can see the URL at the top, so you can pause this video, copy the URL and access this via YouTube. I like using videos because you can ask students what do you find out about place value from this video. Next one here I've just simply um, created a hundred tens and ones chart. I use the shape tool to create the rectangle and the line tool to put the lines in. And what I've got done here, this is what we call the bundles game. Um, for example here I've got the hundreds, the tens and the ones and a dice. To get the dice, if you go to the gallery, you type in dice, interactive and multimedia, and you can see that there are a range of dice that you can use. It's simply a matter of choosing the one that you like and dragging it across onto your page. So students here would click on the dice and it select one. So they'll drag up one unit, two units. Three, two, four, one. And the students can say, okay, I think we've got more than ten here, so let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. Okay, we can replace those 10 ones with a 10. And students can touch the board, hold and drag, and delete. So the students have exchanged 10 ones for a 10. The students can continue playing the game and you get into the hundreds, the tens and ones. Traditionally this game was actually demonstrated using the MOB blocks. Um, this is actually quite hard for a teacher to demonstrate, however using it on your smart board, having these objects down here which are infinitely cloned. Now to do that I had an image of a 10. I right click, select infinite clone and then each time I drag up I get a multiple of that. Another way you can use the MOB blocks images is to explain expanded notation. So here these are infinitely cloned, so I might drag down and we say to students, okay, use the pen tool and record. What have we got? Well, we've got two hundreds, we've got two tens, and we've got one unit. You can also write that as 200 plus 20 plus 1. In this one here, we're looking at expanding notation again. So for example, we've got 433 is equivalent to 3 plus 30 plus 400. So you can see that you can put the plus symbol Now students can create their own. So what I did here, down down the bottom, is I used the shape tool to create a rectangle. Then I typed in the number I wanted and I grouped it. I'll show you that in a minute. So students can drag up 900 and 21. And they can move it across to see that 921 visually. Now to create that, all I did was get my shape tool, created a rectangle, right click properties, fill effects, 
change it to blue. And I typed in the number that I wanted. I might want 400. Go into position. Now to group objects means to stick them together. So you click, hold and drag. You can see here that I have two items selected. So when I select my drop down menu and select group, those two items will be grouped together. Then when I created my second shape, I created over the top, right click, properties, fill, I'll change it to red pixel, and then again I would put my number on the top, click hold and drag, make sure that the two objects are selected, at the drop down menu and group and that's how you can group objects together. Here's an example here of using the same principle, so 3000, sorry, 30,000, 4,656.0 and depending on your year level you can go into the decimals. This here is a quick exercise that I like to do. If you go to your gallery, which is over the side, type in place value, you can drag across this chart. And what you can do is actually write the values on the chart. So here I've got some numbers and I'm focusing on the value of 3. So when the students record the value of 3, they need to write that in red. So if I select my pen tool, and I'm writing and I've got a value of 3 in red. So you can see that as the students come and record the different um, numbers on the number chart, they'll actually see the different values of 3 because it's represented in a different colour pen. This one here is from the multiple choice. So if you go to your gallery and type in multiple choice, interactive and multimedia, you have six different colours from choose from. You simply drag one across, select edit, Select the number of questions that you'd like. Type in the question that you'd like. Type in the answers. And then you need to actually remember to select the correct answer. Once you've created your questions, select OK. And then the students can come up. Okay, what number is between 56,789 and 56,791? Students come and select the answer, click on next, they may get it wrong, it says try again. So depending on your year level, it's depending on the question that you would ask and the answers given as the option. This here, I really like this activity because it's simple to create and you can easily adapt it each lesson. We're looking at a number line. Okay, so here I've got a number line and I have my numbers and the students need to put them into correct answers. So students may come up and say, okay, well this one is the highest number. I'm just doing this random at the moment. So we just say, no, that's incorrect. Let's change them around. Now to create this is very simple. Use your line tool. Draw a straight line. Oops. Try again. So draw a straight line. Then you can use your creative pen. Okay, you can see you've got stars, smiley faces, or with Notebook 11 you can customise your own. So I'm just going to select smiley faces. You just click once. It's like a mini stamper. So using creative pen as a mini stamper. Once you've got your number line there, I suggest you lock it in place. So you click, hold and drag. 
and you can see that I've got these number of items that I want to lock in place. Select a drop down menu, lock in place. Now students can't move those. What I like about this activity is you can have students walking into the classroom, get them to walk in with a number line on the smart board and ask them to write a number. So students might be coming in and they might write I don't know, 63. Oops, I've got my creative pen selected. Back to normal pen. 32. Someone might come in and write 1036. The next person might write 4. Then, once the class is settled, you can say, OK, let's order these numbers on the number line. So you can actually drag across the numbers according to the place value on the number line. And students have been part of this process of creating it because they've chosen the numbers. This here is a screen capture of a site which is called Shark Numbers. This is your URL. It's a great site. A boat appears and students need to identify the place value of the number and if they get it incorrect, a shark comes and bites the boat. This is another one which is fantastic. It's a screen capture again. This is the URL. On this site here, they've got the bongos playing and students can look at place value in the ones, the tens or the hundreds. And as they drag each of them across, it changes the number value here and also on the ruler. So they're visually getting an understanding of place value.